Okay, in the last tutorial, we learned how to use the EKG edge finishing design to both decorate and finish our applique shapes. That was really a way to make our applique shapes look even better, and it was also a fun way to use a lot of thread colors. Now, we used it in a Trapunto setting, but know that we could have just as easily used it as free motion machine embroidery. In that case, we would have left out that extra layer of batting and we would not have needed to use a stabilizer since the applique shapes were made with fusible web and that would have acted as our stabilizer. Now in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to add some fun free motion machine embroidery to this wall hanging as well. But this time, we're going to be working outside the applique areas or directly on the background fabric itself. So what we'll be doing here is adding some embroidered grapevine curly cues that are flowing from the stem. Now we've got room for two curly cues, one on either side of the stem. But before we can begin our stitching, we need to stabilize this fabric or it will pucker up after we're done and we don't want that. For this particular instance, I'll be using an iron away temporary stabilizer and the product I'm using is Iron Away Temporary Stabilizer by Sulky. All I'm going to do is iron it to the back side of the piece, making sure that anywhere I might possibly stitch with my free motion embroidery will have stabilizer underneath it. Now, if I were going to be doing heavy or really dense stitching, I'd probably put two layers of stabilizer. All I'm doing here is stitching an intensely curled loop-de-loop -loop design, and you should recognize this from one of our earlier free motion quilting tutorials. By looping it fairly closely together, we can create this grapevine curly cue effect. Once I'm done, I leave a long thread tail, and later on, I'll carry it to the back side and knot it. I do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the stem. When you do this kind of work, you really want that grapevine to show, so you'll want to use as heavy a thread as possible. I use a lot of hand-dyed size 12 pearl cotton embroidery thread for work like this, but if you're not comfortable doing that, or all you have available is commercially available thread, think of using a 12-weight sulky blendable. That's a cotton thread that's very heavy, and it will show up really well in this type of an application. The take-home message, though, is don't use some wussy little thread. You want something big that's really going to show. Now that my stitching is done, I want to leave my front side looking neat. So I'm using a really large needle with a giant size eye, and I'm going to pull these top thread tails through to the back side. The reason I'm using this big needle with a big eye is just because it's hard to see something this small and I want to get this done quickly. Once they're all on the back side, I tie knots and cut them off. Remember, no one will ever see this size. It's going to be covered up because there'll be another layer of batting and then a backing fabric over it. So what's important here is to make sure the work is secured, but it does not matter that it be neat. Now, once all that's been done, it's time to remove that stabilizer. This is a tearaway brand, so I gently tear it away, trying to stabilize my stitching as I pull it off. Know that if you have trouble removing the tinier pieces, you can always use tweezers to grab hold, and these will work great. Now remember, we haven't even finished piecing our top, so what I'm doing here is creating a nice curvy edge to this center panel of my wall hanging. Using my flexible curve ruler, I'm tracing gentle curves for each of the four sides, and these will become my new edge lines. I am using a product called Liquid Stitch, and this is a permanent fabric glue that is heat activated. I'm running a tiny bead of this glue very carefully over my traced line. And once I'm done, I gently smear this glue only to flatten that bead a bit. Once it's completely dry, notice that it has gone from a white color to a clear color. 
This is your tip that it's okay to cut. Using a sharp pair of scissors, I am carefully cutting right down the middle of my glue line. Now I am deliberately cutting in the middle of the glue line rather than next to the edge of it because this ensures that my entire edge line will have glue on it and that will keep it from raveling later on. Now that my center panel has new curved edges, I want to fuse it to the background fabric. I have ironed my background fabric flat and laid the center piece on it also flat. Using my iron, I lay the iron down repeatedly all along the glued edge. Notice that I do not move that iron once I touch the fabric because I cannot risk possibly moving the position of that fabric edge. I repeatedly move this iron from one edge to the next, but I work with contiguous areas of this edge. Once done, these two fabrics are permanently fused, but there's no stiffness. And that's how easily you can add free motion machine embroidery to enhance an applique scene on your quilt top. Now one thing is, I hope you noticed, I did not hoop my work. I've done this kind of stitching before and I know that because it's fairly loose stitching, I could get away with it. However, if you're doing anything close to dense stitching or if you're having any doubt at all, always, always, always hoop your free motion machine embroidery work and use a stabilizer. In our next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to handle all of these different special effects we're learning once you've got your quilt top basted into the final quilt sandwich. Hope to see you again for that. But before we go, let me show you just one more thing. Now it's not really necessary to finish the glued edges of this center piece, but I want to because I think it will be neater that way. My plan is to use a satin stitch all along the edge, and to do this, I need to have a stabilizer on the back of the quilt to avoid puckering. I'm again using Sulky Temporary Iron-On Tearaway Stabilizer, and you can see that I've already ironed it to the back side of the quilt in all the places where stitching might occur. Because my four corners are all very tight peaked points, I begin with a super narrow satin stitch and repeatedly widen the stitch as I move away from the corner. As I work, I am ever so gently moving the piece to accommodate that curved edge. When you do work like this, always think about your thread as a design tool. When you add a satin stitch like this, you are really adding another line of color into your overall design, and you want to think through the color choice. Here, I'm making a very subtle statement because I'm finding that yellow fabric to be very loud. I'm stitching with a rayon thread that's halfway between an olive green color and a gold color, and that helps to mute the contrast between the bright yellow fabric and the bluish green background fabric. Most of the time though, I use a satin stitch like this as an opportunity to add more contrast by choosing a thread color that will heighten the contrast rather than lessen it. Either way, when you do this type of stitching, think of using rayon or trilobo polyester threads as they will give you the most sheen for your money. The satin stitching has given us a nice clean edge, and once the stitching is done, we simply tear away the stabilizer. This is much easier here because there are no tiny pieces that are difficult to remove. Once that's done, we've reached the moment of truth. I need to cut away all the background fabric beneath the yellow fabric, and this is where your heart kind of skips a beat. <laughs> I carefully separate the two layers with my hands and make a tiny cut in the fabric so I can burrow my way in with a pair of scissors. Very carefully, I cut along the finished edge, slowly advancing the scissors as I move along. Because the corners are so tight, these areas require extra care. And here is what it looks like with the background fabric removed. Phew! <laughs> no accidental slices. In the next segment, I'll show you how to free motion quilt all the special effects we've created here, and you'll see just how much texture all of this will add to the final product. <laughs>